What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. She was visibly upset when Dallas and her 60-pound eagle didn't take home a crown. It's the (laughs) one and only Teresa. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? I mean, she deserved it. She sure did. I have a feeling... I have a feeling she did take home a crown. We just didn't see it. Mm, I hope so. Because it seemed like everyone in that pageant walked home with something. It was like a participation crown. Quite a participation crown. Quite a participation event. I mean, you paid thousands of dollars to enter. Yeah, to get a plastic crown. So. It'd be a, a pretty bad business model not to <laughs> give everyone a parting <laughs> gift. True. But yeah, we saw some other people take home a little little hardware. Why not our girl Dallas and, and her 60-pound eagle? She should have won the overall, which I'm glad Jasmine didn't because then I would feel like it's wrecked. Yeah. I For a second, I thought she was gonna, actually. But you're right. It would have been too obvious. I thought she was gonna when I saw the previews last time, and I was like, oh, come on. But then we realized, we learned that Everyone got a crown. So. Yeah, I, I feel like people in the audience got crowns. Everyone had a crown. <laughs> that place looked like a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Gino can maybe trade the fedora in for, for a crown. Ah, uh, the bold would come out. That's true. But anyways, we will talk about Gino and Jasmine in a bit. Before we do, real quick, a little business. If you guys want to hear our thoughts on 90 Day the Other Way, you can do that. On Patreon and Supercast. That's where we're covering that season. So far, so good. A lot of new couples. A couple old couples. But I'm into it. I'm into the old couples this season. I am too. I I do not like Statler. You guys know it. However, I'm here to watch the story because it'll be interesting. The two of them in a tiny, tiny van. Yeah. I think most people wouldn't get along in a tiny van. They're not even... Yeah. And I have a feeling, I don't know if Statler said it, but I have a feeling she's kind of gassy. And so I'm picturing Statler in a tiny van with her with her flatulence problem. Her hygiene is very questionable. So questionable. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was going to finish my sentence. Like, I don't even, like, I don't think they're going to work. Fair enough. We saw some Statler spoilers, so thank you. But even without that... Me hearing about the two of them in the tiny van after Statler couldn't even lift or had a hard time with the um, house on the wheels, whatever the, you the call care, it. The caravan. The caravan, thank yeah. you. Then how 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 are you downsizing from right. that? Well, let's not give the whole show away for oh. free, <laughs> Teresa. It's on Patreon. It's on Supercast. There's a little taste of what we're doing over there if you're interested. Join us at the Cousins Club level for audio only, the Family Affair level for audio and video of that podcast, plus a monthly bonus. If you're on Patreon over there, you get a special chat. It's like the 90s. It's like an AOL chat room. It's fun. And then Supercast, there's no chat, but you get all the same content. Yes. So you, you choose how you listen, how you watch, and we appreciate if you do. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. That's your direct line. That's where you can call in, share your thoughts, chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. Over on Instagram. So follow us at Married at Married to Reality Pod. Yes, that's how you say it, Teresa. <laughs> you should know how to say it. I know. I really should. By now, it's been years. It's been years. Okay. Also, make sure you're following us wherever you're listening. That way, when we drop the episode, you get it immediately. You don't have to think about it. It comes right to your device. It's so easy to follow the podcast. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys. Smash it like it's as hot as Michael's first gas station fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> He's going to have some diarrhea. Oh. <laughs> I've never had a fried chicken from gas station. I've had some sandwiches. I don't know if it's, I don't know if I've ever had fried chicken. I've had buffalo mm. chicken from a gas station. It's mm. fantastic. I'll tell you that much. I think the only thing I've ever had was that, and I was really drunk. It was like 4 a.m. I had the hot dog from 7-Eleven. You did? You know how they're like rolling there? Don't remind me. Mm. Yeah. I had it once and I also got a pastry. Same trip? <laughs> yes. Yikes. I used to live in New Jersey. Oh, we know. And I used to have a take 
I used to have to take a bus yeah. to get to New York City. Yeah. And on the way back, the bus stopped next to the 7-Eleven in my town. And then I had a 20 minute walk up the hill. Of so you, I used to stop by and get a snack. Yeah, I mean, the, the 7-Eleven hot dog is the state food of New Jersey. So it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so once I finally decided to do that hot dog, um, not sure how I felt the next day. Probably not great, but I've it's had always, it once. It's always a little shriveled up and brown. Yeah. I used to, used to love these pastries they sell. These like, I don't know how to describe, but Please they were- don't. They were like South American pastries from 7-Eleven. Okay. Amazing. Pa- pupusa? Am I making that up? I don't know. There was like, it was like, it wasn't a donut. It was this big thing with some, something white, like a sugar on top, but it wasn't a sugar. Okay. And it was in a plastic bag, so it was packed. Okay. It's not like they made it there. Moving on. Oh, all yeah, right. moving on. Smash like it's as hot as whatever Therese has said before, <laughs> all that nonsense. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. You guys know we're suckers for a little love. If you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on this podcast right here. Do you have something to read? I sure do, Teresa. Let's hear it. Got a review from our friend Plant Lady. 656. Oh, hello, plant lady. Plant lady, we may be coming to you for some tips and tricks because we can't keep a plant alive over here. We are not. Oh, Uh-oh. I just thought of the plant that's in our balcony that I was supposed to. I took a to- peek. Is it still alive? It's leaning, but it's alive, I think. Wow. I was supposed to water it once a week and it's been about six weeks. <laughs> it's been about six months. Yes, it reminded it to me. Yeah, uh, so plant lady, keep your inbox open. We may be coming to you. But they write five stars titled Funny and Likeable. Love it. I love listening to this podcast. I started following them for their Mavs content, but now I'm binging 90 Day Toe and listening to their podcasts after each one. I almost feel like they're family and always look forward to another reason slash excuse to listen. They crack me up every time. I love that. Yeah, we are. We are. We are a a family. We're all one big family who loves reality TV. Yeah, that would be a fun family reunion. It's just like if every one of your family members loved this garbage. Instead, it's my dad psychoanalyzing us asking why we watch this garbage. And I'm like, Dad, you wouldn't understand. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you for the review, Plant Lady. Beautiful. Beautiful review. If you haven't left a review, be like Plant Lady and leave us a review. Yes. All right. Before we get into it, before we get into the thick of it, what do you say we do a little 90 day by the way? Let's hear it. I was going to help you, but you were like, I haven't got some stuff. I'm going to come to you next week because the, the wells run dry, but I got okay. a couple. I got a couple I'm excited to talk about. So by the way, number one, are you familiar with, have you ever watched the Jersey Shore? You're talking about Jersey hot dogs. I know what it is, but I've never watched it. All right. Well, I grew up on the Jersey Shore. I mean, not... The actual short, the show. I watched it all I used the time. to go to Jersey Shore because it was uh, an hour and a half. Grab a 7-Eleven. Grab a 7-Eleven hot dog, bake in the sun. Exactly. Call it a day. So, okay. Jersey Shore, there was a guy in it named Vinny. Mm-hmm. Um, fun guy. And not a mushroom. Just a fun guy. What? And- oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Such a dad's joke. I didn't mean to say it like that. But he's like, (laughs) I was going to say cool guy. And then I was like, I'm going to get shit for saying he's a cool guy. So I was like, fun guy at the last minute. And anyways. um, Nice. He's got a podcast now. Okay. Something something went wrong is the title of his podcast. And he had Jasmine on it. Our Jasmine? Uh, Jazz and Gino. Ooh. And... It's interesting because she does a lot of these like pop-ons, do a 10-minute interview here, a five-minute interview there, E.T., whatever, Entertainment Weekly, right? Oh, I thought we like E.T., the extraterrestrial. Phone home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this was an hour-long conversation. She oh, sat wow. down and just had an hour-long conversation with Vinny from Jersey Shore, and it was pretty good. Like, it was actually... Somewhat interesting, somewhat enlightening. She's well spoken. When you get to see her not chopped up in these 90 day edits, you're like, wow, she actually has a decent head on her shoulder. Okay. She knows what she's doing. Does she? I think so. I I think so. I mean, so Vinny asked a lot about how they met. Vinny, I should say, is a huge 90 day fan, so that's why he had her on. Classic. He was Who like, isn't? Real if you say you're not, you're lying. 
Yeah, we all watch it. Come on. But he kind of asked some questions. How'd you meet? And Jasmine was like, I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to say. It was the sugar baby site, which is why she didn't want to say. But did she say it eventually? She alluded to it. Oh. Um, but then she said she didn't even know about the show. It was Gino's idea to apply. Mm. She had never heard of it, knew nothing about it. They well, ap- she's in Panama, so. Sure. they. I'm sure this runs outside of the States. but It does, but it's not as popular. I'll, my, yeah. m- in Czech, it's not as popular. Yeah. Um, they applied, though, and got contacted in three days. So TLC knows when they've got gold on their hands. Mm. So she talked a bit about that. And then she promoted, probably the reason she took this offer, she was promoting her jazzy protein. Oh. Remember I told you way back when she was creating a vegan protein powder? Mm-hmm. So she was promoting that. And this, I think this protein is going to be a big flop, at least judging by the packaging. It looks, if you look at this bottle looks like it's straight out of an 80s infomercial it is honestly like protein powders there's so many and 99 percent of them are disgusting yeah and Vinny was like you know people aren't gonna buy things just because they're fans of you like the product has to appeal to them and apply to them yeah i guess it's her passion fitness is her passion i get it but it's um it's not unique there's so many vegan proteins and yeah so many so many so I proteins, finally found yeah. one I like. You All know right. the one with the nice skulls on the on the back? No. It's 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 we extra it? protein. Oh. It's coffee flavor. It tastes oh. like coffee. All right. It's amazing. All right. It took me multiple years to find something I like. You really graduated from those seven eleven hot dogs <laughs> to, to vegan protein powder. <laughs> it's not vegan. Oh, okay. It's we. Way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was either or. Yeah. <laughs> you chose the yeah. wrong one. Anyways. No, it's a way. It has some real animal in it. Well, back to my way, my okay. Bible way. <laughs> uh, if you guys are interested in hearing the full hour-long podcast, it's on YouTube. There's a video component of it. Check it out. Something Went Wrong is the name of the podcast. Interesting. Which asked yes. All right. By the way, number two, speaking of passions. Well, I was going to ask, did it sound like her and Dino are finito? Her and who? What did I say? I think you said Dino. <laughs> she know. I was just thinking about something about dinosaurs. Um, Try to think about the show. <laughs> I think it would help the podcast. Uh, you're still thinking about 7-Eleven hot dogs. I can understand how that gets you twisted. I really was thinking of something I saw about a new dinosaur species. Never mind. Uh, so here's the thing, because I was trying to glean any insight if they were together or not. She wouldn't say, of course, yeah. NDAs. She wasn't wearing a ring. Hmm. Which is kind of telling, but I don't actually know she does wear a ring regularly. I mean, she got, how many rings did she get? Three. Yeah, I think. Um, But I don't know if it's like something she wears every day. So she was not wearing it on the interview. Mm. But she wouldn't let on whether they're together or not. But she did say like, oh, I'm in Michigan because that's where my husband lives. So I don't know. Interesting. We'll stay tuned for sure. All right. By the way, number two. Let's hear it. Mark your calendar. July 17th. Coming up. Coming up. Kara of Kara and Guillermo. Mm-hmm. She's she's going to be performing a new unreleased song. Where? It's a great question because I got excited. I was like, oh, look at her doing a show, getting out there because we played her other song yeah. on, on the pod and it was pretty good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I looked up this venue, Teresa. It's, it's at a gym in her town. So somewhere in Virginia, right? Charlottesville. They they have a rooftop at this gym where they do like yoga and other group activities. That's where she's going to perform. Yikes. <laughs> the ACAC Charlottesville. <laughs> the good news is if you're a member of the ACAC, you get in for free. Okay. <laughs> With your membership card, I guess. <laughs> but people don't seem to be excited. She posted about this on Instagram and the comments came in strong. I mean, it's kind of a bold move to come up with a song and then perform in your hometown. It's almost like... Well, perform at your gym. Yeah, it's almost like you know you are the celebrity. True. Kind of thing, like rubbing in their faces. Like, well, I don't know. I don't think anyone's rubbing anything Well, also at the local gym. I don't... Why would I go to a concert to listen to one song? 
That's the thing. The time says from like 6.30 to 8. I'm like, what, are you going to just put it on a repeat? Are you doing other things? Are other things happening? Maybe are she's other... going to be signing something. Is it a talent show? Or Balloon other... art. But the comments were harsh. People were writing everything from, she sucks. Oh. To, you pasted your photo on someone else's body because the image is like her in a bikini. Mm-hmm. She re- she responds to all the comments, which is terrible. Like, oh, someone wrote she sucks. She was like, thank you. Someone wrote you posted you pasted your photo on someone else's body, and she was like, I did not actually. It's like stop responding to these people. I mean, what? It's kind of mean when people comment on someone's body, even if she'd fine tune it. Like, you Who do cares? Look, yeah. at our, look at our girl Darcy. I mean, she had a baby recently. I saw a photo that I thought like, yeah, she is a little bit of a mom bod. Who? Cara. Oh. But right. it's okay. She's a mom. She's a real so don't person. Be, don't be mean. Yeah. Who cares? But if you guys are interested, check it out. July 17th at the the local gym. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe Jasmine can sell her protein powder there. No. They can team up, do a collab. All right. All right. That's it. That's 90 Day, by the way. Nice. What do you say we get into it? The reason we're here, Sunday night, 90 Day Fiance, happily ever after, question Question mark, mark. season eight, episode 18. It's smelling like the end, slowly. Nope, that's just gas station chicken you're smelling. (laughs) Out of all the places, like... Georgia has a lot of fried chicken places. Even like taking to a freaking Waffle House. Still better than gas station chicken. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's let's begin where they began. Michael is in America and Angela has a Pontiac Solstice. The car? Unbelievable. I don't know what car I pictured her in. Not that one. I imagined a lot more political bumper stickers on it. Well, that, she, mu- she must have another car because she has 15 or whatever the number is of grandkids. Yeah. She, she can barely fit in her car herself and Michael. She probably has like a old church van parked on her front lawn that she yeah. takes the kids around. In. I think this is her fun car. Like I, the one that you hit a certain age, you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to get a fun car. But the top down. I got a Pontiac Solstice. Sounds like Punxsutawney Phil. Something like that. Um, But I think I remember her driving an SUV in years past. A Volvo or a Lexus. I'm sure she has that too because, again, even one, she could barely fit one grandkid in there. Yeah. (laughs) So I think this is her fun car, which, I mean, when I'm going to hit a certain age, I'm going to get a fun car. Her Mima mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so she she peeled out and went straight to the gas station. I think it seems like that's where they got the chicken from. Like, I don't. Yeah, they, they did. Go to Chick-fil-A even. Yeah, I think maybe that's one of those local gas stations that she, she's from a small town. I'm sure everyone knows everyone. Yeah. Probably like, hey, Jimmy down the street on the corner of the fifth, fifth and um, Southern has the best fried chicken in the, in the whole Georgia. Yeah. And you can get gas too. I mean. Yeah. The original Chick-fil-A is in Georgia. Just is it? Pretty sure. Go well, there. My, she's kind of like flexing with her car and Michael's like, I like bigger things. Huh. <laughs> I mean, he's a big dude. He's an average size dude. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun car. Wait, wait. Okay. So now I'm confused because Michael was sitting in a car last episode waiting to go inside. Remember? Yeah. That was a taxi. No. Yeah. They were sitting in the back. She wasn't driving. I guess you're right. That would make sense. Yeah. That was a cab. All right. So you got the gas station chicken. And gas. And gas. Um, which is what you get when you eat gas station chicken. Yeah. Then we see him hanging some Christmas lights and the kids were just like heckling him the whole time he was hanging these lights. They're like, you need some food kit. I'm like. Yeah, your dogs are barking. Ew, ew. Yeah, eyes up here, kids. What are you looking at my feet for? Yeah, Michael's like a little distressed from all these comments from these kids. He's shocked that the kids are behaving this way. Look who their grandma is, (laughs) Michael. I would expect nothing less. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is actually well behaved in comparison to grandma. Yeah. 
well, they're going out to dinner, but just Angela, Michael, and Scarla because Angela wants Scarla and Michael to bond. Yeah, so let's go to Ray's Steak and Ribs. That's Angela's favorite place to eat. I don't think it's anyone else's favorite place to eat, judging by the fact that there was nobody there. Yes, maybe it was like a Tuesday night. I don't care. Go to our favorite <laughs> restaurant on any night of the week. There's going to be at least True. one other person True. eating there. Well, on the way, Angela's driving, holding a cigarette and making comments that she can't see. That sounds safe. I'm like, okay, Michael, like, this was your first, like, hint that you should probably run. Oh, I'm sure he was planning it the entire time. Oh, yeah. So they get to the cackle barrel and... I actually looked up the reviews of this place. Pretty good. Really? Pretty good reviews. And I looked at the menu. Gator bites. That's what he should have gotten. Get some gator bites for Michael. Give him a real taste of the South. He's really excited about chicken fingers because he, like, he doesn't know what it is. Ribbies, chicken fingers. What is this stuff? He had no idea. Well, Angela ordered something for him that I wouldn't eat. Freaking Shrimp and grits? Disgusting. Yeah. Who wants yeah. to eat shrimp in a landlocked place? It's like I mean, eat after, it when you, and you eat it at a coastal town. Go to Savannah and get shrimp. After gas station chicken, I think anything from raised steak and ribs is an upgrade. Yeah. No, shrimp and grits. I mean, I'm not from the South, so I do not like grits. Don't hate me, guys. I do not. I tried. I hated it so much. I don't like shrimp either. But like, if you want him to taste something, this is a barbecue place. Give him a freaking barbecue, if anything, right? Whoa. Or gator bites. Or if he wants chicken fingers, let him have chicken fingers. Why did you order grits and shrimp for him? I mean, if it's her, if, if it's her favorite dish, you want to... She didn't get that. She got a freaking barbecue. True. He, the way he tasted it, because he was suspicious of it, rightfully so. And the way he tasted it, it was like when you stick your tongue to a frozen pole yeah. when you're a kid and just like kind of like slowly like lick it. Yeah. He was very suspicious. No, like I don't understand. Like let him pick his bottle. Like if he wants chicken finger, chicken fingers, like get grits on the side so he can taste it. But ah. Uh, I felt for him with this dish. Well, he wasn't liking anything because then he tried Angela's rib mm -hmm. and he was chewing it and then turned his head and it was hard to see, but Angela called him out for spitting it out and like spitting on the wall. Which is disgusting. It is nasty. Like spit it in your napkin. Spit, if it in you your, need to. spit it in your napkin or just plug your nose and swallow it. But Angela was not selling it. Like when she was like, oh, try this. This is my rib. Try it. She wasn't selling it as a very appetizing meal. She was like, yeah, yeah, that's hog. That's that hog I was telling you about. Like that's pig. And I'm like, don't, you don't need to like whisper that in his ear as he's trying. I it. think she, he probably took a bite of something fatty, which yeah, like I would spit grizzle. out too, but I would spit it in my napkin if I had to. Or as yeah. you say, you suck it up, you swallow it. You swallow it. You just take a drink with it. But the way she was like, yeah, that's hog, that's pig. I'm like, even if it was the most delicious thing and you were just breathing your bad breath in my face saying that while I was eating it, <laughs> I would probably vomit too. Yeah. I like ribs, but I like lean ribs. I don't like fatty stuff. Yeah. Well, Angela got pissed. She got fired up that he spit. Stormed out. It's like, that's disrespectful to my friend's place. <laughs> Which is hilarious because now all of a sudden Angela's the queen of respect, right? <laughs> like she knows a thing about respect. I mean, spitting in a restaurant, even even if you're at a Waffle House, it's still disgusting. It is, but don't come at me about respect, Angela. You have not respected anyone or any place since you've graced our TV screens for the first time. True, true. So it was just a little ironic and hypocritical for her to be talking about yeah. respect. She ran out for a cigarette. To calm down. And then she came back. Yeah. And Michael keeps saying he did not spit. That he was just like doing something with his lips. But then he admitted to spitting. Yeah. He, he did Classic say Classic like, Michael always lies. <laughs> and then, it, then he admits. It's like, bro, just admit it. At least he's honest. Yeah. And so Skyla's like, this is crazy. You guys have issues, but you're acting like you don't. And Michael says, well, 
I just want to be happy together. And I, I want to show that I'm here for you, Angela. So mm-hmm. he messed up. He made a mistake. But now he's backtracking and saying, no, I'm, we're going to make it right. Yes. We'll see about that. We know, we, right? know it, we know it's coming. Michael's about to hop in that Pontiac and pedal to the metal. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Shall we move on? Let's go to Salina, Kansas. Rainy Kansas day. It's been three months since they came back from Cameroon. And yes, we're talking about Emily and Kobe. Oh, yeah. I feel course. like we have an intro to anyone so far. We're just jumping right I mean, right people in. know. People know. Yeah. You guys know what's up. Try to keep up, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Emily and Kobe. Three months since they've been home and some big changes, some big secrets, some big news. Emily is pregnant. Shocker. The, these two are the new Kalani and Asuelu. Yeah. <laughs> like you just look at Emily the wrong way and she gets pregnant. At least Emily is still popping babies with Kobe. For now. Mm-hmm. No, their their relationship seems solid. Yeah. Their issues are not with each other. No. It's with outside influences. But okay, yes, she's pregnant. She goes, well, we were actively not not trying to get pregnant. We were just doing the whole pull and pray. Well, hmm. that's that's how you get pregnant. Pull and pray. I mean. The pull yeah. and pray. Put that on a bumper sticker. Slap that on your <laughs> Pontiac solstice. So... They go get the ultrasound with the kids. Is this like, what? Well, that's not a gynecologist place. That's I wouldn't know. know. Like ultrasound places you roll in and pay 50 bucks to see the baby. Does that no? exist? I don't know. I'm guessing. This place looked like there was some incense being lit in a corner. It was a little yeah. woo-woo looking. I mean, when I go for my gyno checkup once a year, they don't sell baby clothes. It's a, it's a doctor's office. It's not like a sofa in the corner? No, hmm. it's a doctor's office, right? When you yeah. go there, they do what they need to do. No one's trying to sell me anything. Well, they probably couldn't find a doctor's office that would allow a TLC production crew. Mm. That's what I'm saying. It. I'm sure there must be places like that. Oh, well, clearly here's one. Oh, some sort of like a doula place. Hmm. Right. right? Um, doulas must have access to, you think what so? do you call it? I don't know. I don't know what they do, la. Like doulas are like those nurses, unofficial nurses that help you deliver babies. Okay. That's the girl on, that's Corona on. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I know what a doula is, but I, I don't know what their job fully entails. Like, do they do ultrasounds or doula are they not? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> they're here. This is how they're going to announce to their kids that they're getting another sibling. Yes. Yeah, so. Doing the ultrasound, that is something that looks like a baby. Yeah. And the kids were like, oh, baby. And they <laughs> wish for a baby sister. <laughs> Coben does. Yeah. So they're 12 weeks, which means they got pregnant. They conceived in Cameroon. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nice. So, That's a vacation baby. A vacation, a vacation baby, yeah. So now we have to spill the beans. We have to tell Emily's parents. Yes, and there's another issue. They promise that they won't reproduce as long as they still live with them because they're running out of space. Yeah. And apparently they were going to find a house and tell the parents, but the housing market is really tough. So It is. The mortgage rates are crazy. Crazy. What the hell? I don't know if that's everywhere. I guess it's got to be everywhere. I think people who bought houses during COVID for like those... 3% 3% down, locked out. Oh, yeah. Now right. it's like 8 plus. It's crazy. I have a friend who just sold his house and like doubled his money. Man, insane. I wish we bought a house. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. We don't like to be tied down. <laughs> We're nomads. <laughs> yes. So, okay. The whole family is hanging out, having dinner, and it's time to break the news. Yes. Well, they're thinking of how are we going to say, and then Coben goes, that is a baby, my mom's tummy. Yeah, well, Emily was trying to soften the blow, being like, we looked at a couple houses this week. We hated both of them. So, like, trying to say, hey, yeah. we're being responsible. Hey, we're doing what we told you we were going to do. And then Coben's just like, yeah, but they did what they told you they weren't going to do, by the way. Uh, there's a baby in my mommy's tummy. Yeah, parents are a little shocked. And Lisa gets, okay, 
I don't know if I picked up on this correctly, but Lisa gets emotional saying, they're choosing to stay here forever. Hmm. I didn't pick up on like, that. She said that, but she said it with like tears in her eyes. And it seemed like she's upset because it almost seems like, okay, they're full invading us. Like they're not moving out ever. Oh, well, I can understand why you think that. David tells the camera, I think we need to stop enabling now, which is like ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. You needed to stop enabling 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's good to help out your child. I get it. But then they've been living there for a while now. Yeah, they don't know how to live on their own. Yeah. That's the issue. Is I have a friend who they moved back with her parents for about two years to save up money for a house for doubt payment. Yeah. But that was their plan. And they still paid parents monthly. But yeah. it was just cheaper and living on their own. Once they saved up money, they're out. Yeah, so. I think they were getting a free ride. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, we need this assistance. They were just getting a free ride and taking advantage of it. Yeah. And then not even obeying the rules that David and Lisa were putting in place. Yeah. And now they're like, oh, we're going to we're going to find a place now and we'll move out. I remember on the previous season, the first season they appeared on, her sister lived there too. Oh, yeah. I'm wondering if she's out. Yeah, it's Probably. Because, it's because the parents are enablers. Yeah. Um, a little spoiler alert. If you guys don't want the spoil, you guys can skip ahead for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, a news article or 10 came out and Emily and Kobe bought a house like several months ago. Yeah. So, and then they popped the baby girl too. Yeah. So yeah. They, they did end up getting a place. Good. A few hundred thou. A few hundred thousand. They got their own place. A few hundred thousand? It's like 300 ten thousand dollars or something the that's house. not horrible no for what they got but I'll, also it's cancer so well that's what a lot of the comments are like man i wish i'd get a house like this for three hundred thousand dollars i sometimes look at houses for fun or i see all these reels there mm -hmm. are these like mansions for like three hundred and fifty thousand somewhere no. in texas no. and then you look at it and it's like in the middle of absolutely freaking nowhere yeah and you're like, well, that's why it's so cheap. Because the closest town, it's like closest city for you is like Dallas. It's three hours away. It's yeah. Like, you got to drive 20 minutes to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah. And you look at, I don't know, places like Massachusetts, one of the northern fancy states. Yeah. And then you get like two bedroom, one bathroom. It's falling apart. 600,000. Oh. It's wild. Uh, you want to talk about California? I was, oh, just, I was just out just there. Just a shed for 500 grand. Yeah. If you want any semblance of like a decent home, it's upwards of a million dollars. Yeah. It's crazy. A friend of mine bought a house and it was one of those like cookie cutter houses. I think it's it's like three bedroom, two bathrooms. They all look the same, right? W and where? Somewhere in Orange County. Somewhere oh, yeah. in between LA and San Diego. Oh, yeah. It's probably a easily it was a million, a million and but a half, it's a yeah. small house with a tiny backyard again a cookie cutter of its same house next yeah. to each other the house here would be three hundred thousand. yeah at yeah. at the at the at the most probably yeah. because yeah. it's not big but it's wild it's crazy crazy well that's why a lot of people are leaving yeah coming here to florida please. yeah we don't want you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right um, I think this is a good place to take a quick break. Yes. All right. When we come back, let's go to Brazil. All right. Let's do it. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a second. This episode is brought to you by Badlands Ranch. Guys, we don't have to tell you. Probably the only thing we love more than reality TV is swell dogs. Swell, semi-swell. We love them all. <laughs> what we don't love is when those swellers are suffering with health issues. That's right. And it seems like more dogs are suffering from health issues lately. In fact, actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seeing more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and overall health than ever before. And you know what she discovered? It all comes back to their food. Makes sense. So... 
Catherine did a ton of research and created something she feels great about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete from Badlands Ranch. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients on the planet, including several superfoods that are vital to your dog's health. Plus, Badlands Ranch supports the Jason Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and place them in loving homes. Now that's really swell. Totally swell. And Superfood Complete is super easy to prepare. And knowing it's packed with all these healthy ingredients should give anyone peace of mind. Agreed. So if you want your dog to experience the incredible benefits of Badlands Ranch Superfood Complete, go to BadlandsRanch.com slash married and order right now to get up to 50% off your regular priced order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. 90-day money-back guarantee. That's amazing. Just go to BadlandsRanch.com slash married. That's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S Ranch.com slash married today. And treat your dog to the best with Superfood Complete from Badlands Ranch. Your swell world, thank you. This episode is brought to you by Happy Mammoth. Whether it's that time of the month again, or you're going through menopause or perimenopause, there are just some days you don't feel like yourself. It's the worst, but it doesn't have to be that way. Thanks to Happy Mammoth and their Estro Control and Hormone Harmony supplements. And let me tell you about Hormone Harmony for a second. Hormone Harmony contains science-backed herbal extract called adaptogens that help the body adapt to any stressors like chaotic hormonal changes that happen naturally throughout a woman's life. It's actually more than a supplement. It's a phenomenon. In fact, a bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds because Hormone Harmony isn't just for menopause. It's for any woman with symptoms of hormonal imbalances, including night sweats, low moods, poor sleep, occasional bloating, and the list goes on. And now, for a limited time, you can get 15% off on your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code MERIT at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use the code MERIT for 15% off today. I'll also have John put a link in the show notes. But one more time, use the code MERIT, that's M-A-R-R-I-E-D, at checkout and start feeling like yourself again today. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. How are things on your side of the phone? I spilled my oh. green juice out of my Christmas light. Well, I could have told you it was a bad idea. Well, you're <laughs> doing Christmas in July, I guess. I know, because after June, July is closer to Christmas already, so. Is that true? Yeah, it's the July, 7th. July, July, August, September, October, November, so Five, yeah. five months in a week or so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I guess that's closer. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, it was a, that was not a good idea to drink my green juice out of my Christmas light. No. Nah. Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Patrick and Thais. Yes, they're still in the Pierre. John and Carlos. Thais I feel Thais. like I feel like they have a secret handshake or something. They are they have really bonded. Yeah, like John. Comes back with the beers just for him and Carlos. They get off the pier and just chilling and chatting. And Patrick is jealous. He's like, John didn't even ask me for a beer. I, I like beer. Who doesn't like a beer on a lake? <laughs> it, True. It's so funny, Carlos and John, seeing them communicate because Carlos talks and then John just makes noises. <laughs> like he, his response is, hey, 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 like... <laughs> He doesn't communicate. But finally, John had a brilliant idea and he whips out his phone. Here's my phone. Let's translate. Yeah. So I like that John is having Patrick's back. No matter how much he's bonding with Carlos, like he still has Pat's back. Totally. And Carlos says, oh, I don't think Patrick's a bad person, but he told me he no longer needed my blessing. And that rubbed. Carlos. I don't think that's what he said. He just said, I want to earn your respect, which yeah. I think it's better, but... Well, he did in a in a sense say, I don't need your blessing because they got married without it. So yeah, without saying it, he said it. I still think this whole thing is Thais's fault because she was the one who didn't want to tell her dad. Oh, it's totally. How would Patrick ask for a blessing if your fiance says, no, 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 we cannot tell my dad. He's going to freak out and... It's yeah. totally, it's totally Thais's. And I like Thais, but that was a mess up. And so does Carlos. It's daddy's little girl and he's not going to point fingers at her. But 100%, it starts with her. 
Yeah. So John says, well, it's hard for Patrick to open up to people, but he's a good family man. Like, look at him hanging out with the family right there. And <laughs> that's when Patrick just starts shouting, leave John and come swim with me, Carlos. Come, <laughs> come take a swim with all Patrick. And so Carlos comes. He does that. Patrick jumps in the water. Oh, he looked like he was on the verge of drowning the entire time. Yeah, because of that leg. I feel like that brace yeah. is like cement Heavy. shoes yeah. in the water. It was making me a little nervous. It was not I, graceful. I, I should, he he should have taken it off. Like for swimming, I'm sure That's it would true. have been okay. Not to jump in with that. Probably would have actually been good. Like yeah. In the water, a little resistance, yeah. build some strength up. But they're bonding in the water while Thais, I forgot how much she's afraid of water. Which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You got to get over that, Thais. Now is the time to get over it. You're young enough mm-hmm. where you're 20, you're in your 20s. You can yeah. get over that fear. If you get, if you hit 40 and you haven't taken a couple laps at the local mm-hmm, Y, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. So they, they have a little fun splashing around in the water. It's good. It's progress. And then we cut to dinner. Did you see those beer coolers, like the Heineken beer? No. So on the table was this like single Heineken holder. It was almost, it was like a, almost a giant koozie. Oh. And you keep your Heineken in there and I think it keeps it cool. Nice. But just like a single. It's almost like that brewmate thing. See? Eh? The brewmate. These are those koozies that they've, they've been all over the internet. One of those like things that went viral. Okay. It's like a koozie, but it cools it down. Koozie, some would say. Mm, yeah. That's what I said. What you did s- I say? You said cozy. That's what that's what it is. Cozies. <laughs> now you're just trying to combine the two to Co- slowly work your way to cozy and then be like, yes, what I, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's cool versus cold is the sound. Cozy. Cozy. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Carlos wants to play some pool. Patrick asks Carlos to play pool. And John's like, well, that's my cue. I'll see you guys later. And then Thais is like, well, I should take Elise to bed. So giving the giving the men some mm-hmm. time to talk. And this this went, this was beautiful. Because Pat tells him that he felt rejected when Carlos didn't want to give him his blessing for the first time. Yeah. And then Carlos says, well, I felt very hurt when you didn't ask. You guys didn't tell me. And this is like beautiful heart to heart. Like when Carlos gets so emotional. Is, Carlos is bawling. Yeah. I'm and glad so, that I'm glad that he left because she's scared of water. I mean, that he was flooding <laughs> the place. And Patrick finally asked for his blessing. And it's just beautiful. They hug. It's all good. This, Carlos, this is all they needed. Carlos gives the blessing. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah. What well, took you so long, Patrick? Well, I think he was waiting for the right moment. Like if like. Until today, basically, all Carlos did was just making fun of him, making nasty comments, right? Yeah. How do you ask for a blessing while Carlos making fun of you? Like, True. you don't. Yeah. So then the next day, I think Carlos is hung over or something. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we're going out on the boat. Carlos is out of commission, so he's going to hang back. It's like, I, I, sounds like a hangover to me. Yeah. Um, so they just got on the boat real quick. Seemed like fun. Mm-hmm. Took Elise out, having the time of her life. Then they go back to the hotel and they're hanging out, planning Elise's party. And John comes by. So Patrick's now like, all right, well, I'm going to go check on Elise. I'm going to leave you, Thais and John alone yeah, to, because to talk. Patrick and Carlos weren't the only two people who were supposed to make out. That's r- make up. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes. I always get confused with these two. Please make, don't. Uh, make up. A lot of people make out, and that's how they make up. You know make up. Yeah. So now it's John's and Thais's turn. Yeah. And so Thais is telling John that he's been causing some problems, and he should apologize for how he talked to her friends. And John's like, why would I apologize? She threw a drink at me. I didn't throw a drink back because I'm a gentleman. We're oil, we're oil and water. Oil and water don't mix. No, no, no. He said oil and vinegar. Did he? Yeah, oh. which, bro, that's how I make my famous uh, dressing. Oil, vinegar, <laughs> a little bit of mustard, some some uh, oregano, a little bit of lemon juice. It all mixes. Mm-hmm. 
Follow I just along for more. Away. I recipes. just gave it away. <laughs> yeah, could have bottled that and sold it. Mm. Yeah, oil and vinegar. They don't mix. <laughs> but he says he'll behave at Alicia's party. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Something needs to go down to bring some drama. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. Are you ready to see all the crowns? Gino and Jasmine. Gino and Jasmine. It's like the ninth day of this pageant. I don't understand how long this pageant is. I mean, it's in a basement. It's probably cheap to rent, so why not extend it? Sure. Buy four days, get one free probably. Yeah, it's the evening gown competition, and then the queen is going to be revealed. Guys, the sound effects during this segment were so fraudulent and so wild. If you watch the scenes... Everyone's just sitting there, literally sitting there, blank faced, staring at the contestants. And then the audio is like, ah, like crowd going wild, so much <laughs> clapping, so much cheering. Cut to the audience. Nobody's clapping. <laughs> nobody's cheering. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. They're all, all the ladies are doing the catwalk. Mm -hmm. Jasmine needs to work on her catwalk. Oh, why? A little bit. Why? I feel like she. It wasn't as consistent as some of the other ladies. All right. Now you're sounding like Gino. Come on, let I me know. get you a fedora. I mean, he he lost his voice, so I'm stepping in. Okay. But, I mean, she did a great job. I couldn't do it, but I'm just comparing her to all the other ladies. Well, I think he would have gotten a crown regardless because everyone got a, a... participation <laughs> crown. Everyone got a crown. The CEO started going through, like, all these random titles. They It was like the Dundies. Dundies. <laughs> and I, it was like the Dundies. Like, uh, they're just making up, making up titles so that everyone gets a trophy. Yeah. So the main title is the Miss International World. But before which, that. Before that, all the others. And guess who's the Miss International Latina? <laughs> Jasmine. A lot of these women were Latina, so I guess it's good that she won that. I guess that's true. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough a tough crown to win, a lot of competition. Jasmine is like a little sad she didn't win overall, but she's like, I'm happy with any crown. Bro, they're all the same. They're all the same. And also, who were the judges? Like the front desk employees at the Holiday Inn? Because we didn't <laughs> see any judging. I think the past um, contestants, because there are always these three women... Or a couple of women with crowns this whole time. So you think, yeah, you think the previous competition? I guess. Yeah, there was no like table of judges. No. There was no numbers being held up. Please, did you see the place? Yeah. The basement pageant? Yeah. I just want to know who judged this and why and how this all happened. But Jasmine, yeah, she won... She won a crown, so she was happy. She didn't need to win Miss International World. Yeah. Like, when they were waiting before the announcement, they were sitting in the hallway on off on random office chairs. Did you see oh, that? Oh, yeah. They were like computer chairs. They were, they were literally the computer chairs that you see surrounding a dumpster out in a parking lot outside an office building. Mm -hmm, they just, like, mm -hmm. corralled all those and threw them in the hallway. Yeah. Like... What? What was this passion? But she's happy. She got a crown. She got a title. There, so it's all great. There needs to be a reality show about these pageants. And I'm sure that there's like dance moms and all that stuff. But this is probably such a widespread epidemic of these just basement pageants. I mean, if you're an, an adult, you do you. I hate the kid pageants. But it's they such, put makeup on kids. It's like, ew. But this is such a scam. Every person, what did Gino say? It was like two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. It was like I think it was like fifteen hundred to two grand. Yeah, I think plus was, you have to travel there and hotels. Okay, so but I'm just it saying. Adds up. I'm just saying what Miss International World is taking in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like twenty people entered. So forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. How much does it cost to rent the Holiday Inn? You know, a couple grand. So these people are just pocketing this money for what? Giving out these fake crowns? It, it's meaningless. This thing means nothing. Mm. At least if you win Miss America, you get a prize. You can yeah. travel the world. You get some fame. Yeah, you become a model yeah. like many of them do. But This yeah. is such a scam. It is. It's almost like an ego booster. That's all it is, which yeah. if it works, I guess more power to you. But how could it work? 
when you look around and you go, oh yeah, everyone wanted Dundee, <laughs> you know? You can put in your social media. It's like when you, when you finish, um, like a, what is it called? Like a course and LinkedIn gives you a little sticker, yeah. a little thing that you can put in your profile that you can put little, I was the, I was the Miss International Latina in a basement pageant and I guess so. I don't know. Whatever makes you happy. Exactly. What doesn't make Jasmine happy is Gino. She's still mad. She's still giving him the cold shoulder. But she takes some pictures with him. What was the background? There is not even like a nice background to take photos. No, the whole thing is This whole thing was awful. Yeah. It's just awful. (laughs) It's really not good. I was like, what did I pay for? What did she pay for? Like, awful. Yeah. So they start getting into it because she thinks Gino is laughing at her which we all kind of were but she's like i'm proud i'm proud that i won but i can't pretend i'm happy right now i'm not happy after last night you're always putting me down making me feel like i'm not good enough for you and you know like well i don't like the tone of your voice and i don't like your attitude but i I, think my coaching helped i gave you so many tips (laughs) i gave you so many tips how about that how about the money i gave you for your bills how about bringing you over here on a k-1 visa where's my credit for that how about the paperwork i'm doing for your permanent residency Wait, what? The paperwork you're doing, Gino? Apparently, he told Jasmine it was already done and filed. Yikes. So Jasmine asks Gino, yes or no? Did you submit my paperwork, Gino? Mm. And that's where it ends. We don't know if he submitted it or not. Mm. I'm going to say he did not. I'm going to say he's still working on it because it's, it's hard. Yeah, there's only one guy working at Fedora and Fedora Attorneys at mm-hmm. Law, and he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. I mean, we did it, the two of us together. We spent, what, four hours at Staples making copies? And that was just the copying, the other. Yeah, and we did, we did, so we did the second one, which was easier. He's doing the first one because what he did before, it was K-1. True. Now he needs to apply for the first green card, and there are kids involved. That's True. difficult. Remember for us, we're on the first page of the first green card. We were like 15 questions already. So we decided to get a lawyer. Because yeah. if you fuck it up, then you just postpone it. You just push it further. If you make a mistake, it's it's not good. Yeah, and Gino fucked up already. Yeah. That's why the kids are having a hard time getting here. Yeah. So we'll see whether he filed or not next time. All right, let's go to, well, let's stay in Florida. Let's stay down in Fort Lauderdale and go to Alexi and Lauren. Oh, really? I have Sophie and Rob next. Oh, I do too. I huh. just scrolled too fast. All right, All right let's go to Texas. <laughs> Scroll back. Uh, Rob had met up with Sophie outside of K's and has some things he needs to say to her. He wrote it down. He wrote it down because... He wants to get his thoughts out. And and so he says, Sophie, I think the best thing for the both of us is to just be done with this. Yes. And she's like, why? Okay. I did like Sophie before, but I don't like her anymore because what is she doing? Is this some sort of a gaslighting? She's shocked. He wants to end it. You don't even live with your husband. You left him twice. You you're not there. You're not trying. You live with your friend. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you should have expected this. You should have done it yourself, actually, because well, you're the one who left twice. I think that's the biggest thing. That's why she's upset is that he did it to her and she didn't do it to him because she did everything but say we should divorce. She yeah. left and ignored him. Yeah, and he says, I can't do this back and forth. You keep leaving. He's like, for my own mental health, I need to end this. And I'm I'm with him. Yeah, for sure. And so <laughs> Sophie stands up and runs inside K's. And Rob is like still looking at his note saying, I'm not even, I'm not even done yet. Like I still have more. <laughs> I, I spent some time writing this with a little help from ChatGPT well, and I'm not he even done. Should have, he should have run because K comes out Ugh. and she's very aggressive. Ugh. This is this was giving... Sophie's girlfriend already vibes like Mm -hmm. you don't need to fight her fight Kay also why is Kay mad like Kay wanted Kay wanted them to break up she kept saying Rob is not good for you he did her job exactly and then Sophie's crying saying I can't believe he did that why did he do it 
Are you kidding me? Yeah, the whole thing is absurd. So Rob actually made the, the right decision here. Yes, and you loved just, him. You loved him twice. They're just bitter that he was able to get the last laugh and not them. Yeah, like what was Sophie expecting that she's going to live with Kay being married to Rob? And he's like, D no, like, yeah. we are married. Like marriage is, marriage is everything. Marriage is very serious. Like, yeah, I hate to say this, but Team Rob. Yeah, Team Rob on this one. Mm hmm. All right. Let's now we can go, go to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, nothing really happened here. It's been three months since Lauren's surgery, so it's officially the end of the recovery period. She's having a little celebratory dinner with her parents. Yeah, but she wants bigger boobs. She wants bigger boobs, and who doesn't? I hear you, Lauren, but the issue is... Do you want bigger boobs? I want solid pecs. Okay. Not necessarily bigger boobs. I, I, I wouldn't say that, but I would say solid pecs. Just keep hitting the gym. I'm trying. And, of course, everyone's like, what the heck? Like, you just got out of surgery and now you want to go back into surgery. And she's like, well, well... She was saying something about the fat transfer that she lost too much fat in her boobs. Yeah. I thought they were putting fat in her boobs. But I guess the, you lose some of the fat transfer. Oh, just, I see. That just happens. Just get the good old plastic thing in your boob, no? It's like, yeah, you going to perk them up? Yeah. And so she's like, I'm thinking like a year, maybe I'll, I'll go back in. I'm not fully satisfied and there's the option to do it. So why wouldn't I? And okay, of course you do you. But to have this conversation, the day you've finally been cleared to go back yeah. to your daily routine is absurd. Like if you want to have this conversation, have it in three to six mm -hmm, months. Mm -hmm. You're having it literally the day the doctor's like, yeah. okay, you can like pick up your kids again. Yeah, plus like boob job is not that crazy. She would heal faster. Obviously she's going to have some restrictions, but yeah. it's not like they're going to remove fat from all over her body. But yeah, for she definitely should have waited. And Alexi, he now thinks that she's getting addicted to surgeries and it's a very real thing. Oh, like, look yeah. at our girls Darcy and Stacy and Larissa and Jasmine and all these ladies. Yeah, I I agree. I was glad Alex said that because that was my first thought was like, oh, yeah, now she just sees I can do it. It mm -hmm. was fine. I came out of it all as well. So I'm, why not do it again? And Alex says, well, it's a slippery slope. And mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. It's like I tattoos. Agree. It is like tattoos. I think the reason tattoos are addictive is because you realize they don't hurt and once you're like oh they don't hurt then why wouldn't i the the only thing that keeps a lot of people from getting a tattoo i think is the pain and then once mm. you get it and you go oh it doesn't really hurt well then why not do it again true all right speaking of pains pain in my uh, ass ashley and manuel uh, they enjoy uh, they enjoyed their 15 minutes of peace yeah so time to fight again it's Manuel's birthday. Yeah. And so this is kind of crazy to me a little bit because, okay, they're in the car going to his birthday party. It's after the heart to heart. The Bram is no more fighting. So why are you bringing him out with all your family and friends who don't like him? Well, because it's his birthday and we're going to yeah. celebrate. Well, okay, well. Go out and celebrate the two of you. You just had like a nice moment for the first time ever. True. Why are you bringing him out with people who don't like him, who don't trust him? Your sister, who literally witnessed this whole shit show. True. It's a good point. And then you're going to bring him to a distillery where the whiskey is flowing. And even the best of friends turn to enemies with enough whiskey. Well, they should have been the two of them. The, the two of them should have gone to some whiskey tasting. Yeah. Well, they were. Ashley and Manuel were doing the whiskey tasting, and Ashley's sister was spilling the tea to mom. Mm -hmm. To everyone, to the friends, too. Mom is shocked. Yeah, well, she says, oh, yeah, he was taking money, sending it to his ex, talking to his ex, and wasn't being honest with Ashley how much he was. And mom was a little perturbed, to say the least. Well, like 30 seconds before, mom felt bad for Manuel. It's like, oh, he's probably missing his family. And then Sienna was like, I have some tea. Yeah. And then mom is like, what a liar. What a liar. What a user. Yeah. They came back over from the whiskey tasting and mom was just going off. Like, you're not a person of integrity. You're not a good person. And Ashley tries to explain it, but nobody was buying it. Ashley's like, well, the money's in the bank account. 
tr- like he didn't send it. He's got the money. It's in the bank account. Manuel, like, let me get the password so I can see. I'll show everyone that the money's there. Just, I just need the password. And Manuel was like, why? Why do you need the password? <laughs> oh, and here we go again. <laughs> here we the go. Vicious circle. Famous last words from Ashley. I need my third eye right now. Oh. I don't even know what that means. You need you need to wake up. Yeah, you need to open your eyes. That's what you need to do. Oh, That's yikes. it. Another classic episode of 90 Day Fiance classic. Happily Ever After. Yeah. I can see this going into August. Mm, yeah, two more weeks. And Easily. then tell-alls. Oh. Yeah, I can see two more. Angela on a tell-all. Man. Yikes. Yikes. Um, all right. I wonder, I wonder if this is going to be the tell-alls are shot prior to Michael's freak I out. I was wondering. And then also, um, what's her face? I don't even oh, know her name anymore. Nicole and Mark Moon. Yeah, what's up with them? They didn't even end their story. Well, they just stopped. Very strange. Very and strange. Small perv and... Oh, yeah, they were on the season too. What a season. It always happens like that. There's always some that you just kind of forget about. Yep. All right. Well, that's this episode. If you guys want to hear our thoughts on The Other Way, we're talking about it on Patreon and Supercast. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Married to Reality at Supercast.com. We are talking about it on the Cousins Club level, audio only. If you want video of that podcast, it's on the Family Affair level. Plus, that level gets a monthly bonus. So mm-hmm. check it out. Also, follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. You can message us over there. Share your thoughts. What are you thinking about this season? We want to hear it. So follow along and message us. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys. Smash it like it says, huh? Is the beautiful review from our friend Plant Lady. The Plant Lady. <laughs> the Plant Lady. I love it. Yeah, great review. Thank you for leaving that review. It made our day, made our week. If you haven't left a review, please do. Yeah, be like the Plant Lady. And you just reminded me I'm going to check on that plant that oh, was good. supposed to water once good. a week. Check on the plant. Yes. All right, well, while we go check on the plant, you carry on with your day. Thank you guys for listening. I have said it all. If you, I have said it all. You sure have. It means I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye.